In this video, I'm going to show you how I built this toy box for now, but storage chest, or in my family, we call it a hope chest that my daughter can have for the rest of her life. Let's get into it. If you've been subscribed for a while, you may remember this dresser that I built, and I designed this chest to match. I got started by milling down some rough poplar that I got from a local dealer. I do have full build plans available for this chest available on my website. I've also started going through and making plans for past projects, so head over and check those out if there's anything you're interested in. Also, all the plans are based on standard 3 quarter inch material that you can buy, so no worry if you don't have these milling machines to work with rough lumber. After joining and planing all the pieces, I could put the square edge along the table saw fence and rip all the pieces to final width. Then I could chop them to final length on the miter saw. At this point I went ahead and glued up the top lid panel to give it plenty of time to dry. This is jumping ahead a couple of hours, but I always like to go through and scrape off the excess glue before it fully hardens. With the top glued up, I moved on to cutting all the joinery using these Freud tongue and groove router bits. These cuts can also be made on a table saw, but with that being said, if you are looking for an affordable router and table option, this aluminum Bosch one has always given me great results. I started by running the ends through and cutting the tongues on all the pieces. Then I swapped over to the groove bit and ran the necessary edges through. The last piece of the puzzle were the legs, and for that I'm using some 1 and 3 quarter inch square stock that you can find at Home Depot. I switched over to a quarter inch straight bit in the router to cut these grooves in the legs. I didn't want the groove to run all the way through, so I made a pencil mark on the fence as a guide on where to stop. After running all the pieces through, I used one of the rail pieces as a height gauge to set the bit and take a second pass. The two front legs had the groove centered on the two inside faces, but the groove for the back panel needed to be offset for the lid to open properly. After getting all the pieces cut, I went ahead and did a quick dry fit to test everything. Next I busted out the track saw to break down the half inch maple plywood for the center panels as well as the bottom of the chest. After cutting the pieces to size, I went back to the router table with the groove bit to cut a rabbit along all four sides to create a tongue that would slide in the rail pieces and the legs. Then I just had to notch out the corners of the plywood bottom with a jigsaw for it to fit around the legs. Next I could go ahead and start gluing up the panels. I was running out of time on this first day, and to just make things easier on myself anyway, I did the glue ups in two stages, starting with just the side panels. I also went ahead and got the center styles glued in on the front and back panels at this point.
After the side panels set overnight, I could take them out of the clamps and finish the assembly. One thing that I forgot that I wanted to do was cut a notched area out on the front of the top rail, but no big deal, I could go ahead and get it cut at this point with the jigsaw. I also went through and added these supports for the bottom panel. I did this so I could add the bottom at the same time while finishing assembly and it would help make sure the whole box was square. All that was left to do was slide the panels in, add glue to the tongues, and get them joined to the side panels. Then I applied glue to those bottom supports and heavily persuaded the bottom panel in place. Perhaps shouldn't have made the cuts perfect here and gave some more wiggle room, but I got it in nice and squared nonetheless. With the box glued up, I then took the top lid out of clamps and got it trimmed the final size. Here's a pretty cool example of just how strong wood glue is on edge grain in case you weren't aware. As you can see the wood will fail and break well before the glue seams will. Next was the tedious sanding process. Let's be honest, this lid will most likely be open most of the time, so I really took my time and made sure both sides were perfect. Also, I did sand all the other pieces of the chest before I assembled it to make it easier. With the top sanded, I got both sides stained using Menwax Coastal Gray Stain. For the finishing process, I moved over to my home garage that stays heated, and I set up a spray shelter using this Zip Wall product that makes it so dang quick and easy. All the spraying was done with my Graco 9.5 HVLP and I started with two coats of Zinzer Ben Primer sanding with 220 grit between coats. Then to match the dresser I finished it with two coats of General Finishes Snow White Milk Paint. Spraying white on white sure is riveting stuff on video, huh? With the chest done, I sprayed three coats on each side of the top using General Finish's high performance top coat. And man did I have the settings dialed in on the gray coat for this project. Practically automotive quality finish. For the hinges, I use these really cool torsion hinges from Rockler. Super safe so there won't be any smashed fingers and they still look pretty decent too. I got the template and it made getting them attached to the top really easy. I also decided to add a couple braces on the inside to help keep the panel flat over time. Since this solid wood panel will expand and contract with the seasons, I simply enlarged the hole on the braces to allow the top to move a little as needed. When I attached the lid to the chest, I realized just how good the torsion hinges are, as the front of the lid wouldn't fully close, about the thickness of the hinges, so I would need to route out and recess the hinges. I simply clamped on some scrap blocks to prevent the wood from blowing out and routed out the area with a straight bit. Then I could get the lid and hinges reinstalled and it closed as it should.
Thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the process and learned something along the way. If you are interested in plans or any other products used, everything will be linked below. And you should definitely like the video and subscribe if you haven't already. I really appreciate it. Take care.